So it's 9 a.m. Friday. We have two matches, uh, one at 3 p.m. and another at 6 p.m. I am playing singles, not only those two matches later today, but I'm also playing singles in all of our matches. So uh, we have one today at three, today at six. We have one tomorrow, Saturday at nine, and then one tomorrow, Sunday at 9 a.m. So I'm playing singles in all of them. So it's going to be one hell of a ringer I'm putting my body through. So, gotta hydrate, uh, stretch a lot, and drink lots of water, but I have about four or five hours to kill right now, so I gotta do some photo edits, gotta make money somehow while I'm traveling and when I quit my full-time job, so uh, I gotta up my edit games on some of my uh, photos I took this past weekend for a friend of mine, um, all sports related, and then hopefully make a few business calls and get more business going through as a sports photographer. But other than that, get to relax a little bit, probably take a nap, drink more coffee, drink a lot of water, and then mentally prepare for tonight. You know that awful, awful feeling when you're packing for a trip that's over like a day? You're like, oh, I have everything, I have everything. I didn't forget anything. And then when you walk out of your door, you're like, hmm, I don't think I forgot anything. And then when you're walking into the car, you're like, I probably forgot something. And then full-blown anxiety with the realization that I forgot something. I just don't know what it is yet. <laughs> oh, my God. I totally forgot to pack underwear and compression shorts. <laughs> so I'm going to go to uh, a local Meijer across the street <laughs> and buy some damn underwear. And it's compression shorts, so my goodies aren't flopping around while playing singles this weekend. Mm. Better. <laughs> Just... uh, yours is a little, little more powerful. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm getting, getting a little higher on mine. Well, I'm a. Uh, so the reason why I got my own room is because I'm a huge snorer, and I just don't want to disturb anybody. Uh, I I know that I, I snore too. No, I'm. But bad. that's it. But that's if I've had like you know four or five drinks or something like that, so there we go. Happen. All right. Oh my God, it's humid. Yeah, it is. Whew, they weren't kidding. Yeah, so they, they got ballet here. I'll, I'll park my own car anymore. Hey. Right. What's up, dude? Hey. Oh. Glad, you're, glad you're here? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take it quick. All right. Woo. I need some McDonald's. Unfortunately, our warm-up plans was kind of cut short because the middle school we were warming up in has PE class literally right now. Poor kids. <sighs> PE. It's hot outside, so our warm-up plans are kind of shot, so not exactly uh, an ideal start to uh, one of the biggest matches and arguably most of my teammates' lives post-college, post-high school career. So we're going in dry for this first match. See how this goes. Honestly, the first match I was probably the most nervous for. Not only because what it was the first match, it was also an Illinois team we played in the very first round. And the first two rounds we were playing, and we played 3 p.m. on Friday and then 6 p.m. on Friday, so two on that very first tournament day, um, we played indoors at, uh, I believe it's called Carmel Racket Club. And Carmel's a beautiful beautiful suburb i'm actually thinking about moving down there in about five to six years because it is the most beautiful suburb i've ever seen in my life and a lot of my teammates too that went down on the trip and a lot of people that went down on the trip that weren't even my teammates have definitely said the exact same thing it seems like a really good place to not only just play tennis but nice also club. to settle yeah. down as a young adult and possibly start a family is there a restaurant and bar inside <laughs> Just like a lounge type thing. Yeah, there's not, they don't sell food, there's vending. Well, we should have bought our own. I've got snacks if you need anything. What do you mean by snacks? Uh, RX bar is. Oh, like, no, no. Like I, guess, and... I guess some dried mango and banana. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, it is it moist? <laughs> uh, it's, it's not quite right. 
Not right. Not yet. Then we'll resist. Yeah. Are the courts slow or uh, relatively fast? They're, they're medium, uh, medium speed. They're not super fast like ET. It's got it. Oh, yeah. I, mean, nice. I guess they, they yeah, were in the past. I don't know. Maybe they've resurfaced them since or maybe they haven't. <laughs> Hi, Tim. What's up? Ah. Hi, Mark. What's up, Scott? How are you? But to my surprise, the Carmel Rack Club has 12 indoor courts, so it's absolutely massive. And the ceilings were very high, which is a nice little surprise. Even though the hallways were a little bit short, which is perfectly okay. But the surface on the tennis court itself was just right for me. It wasn't like super slow to where I wasn't able to get drop shots that my opponent gave me. And it wasn't anything super fast either, like at Essential Tennis. The individual I played, Daniel, he was a very, very good athlete. And his game style kind of surprised me because he's standing at about 6'2", 6'3", and he's kind of a baseline grinder. And I believe he was, uh, when I was talking to his teammates, he had a very, very strong background in Division three or some sort of collegiate basketball. So he was an overall athlete. And, you know, it's my first match. I was absolutely, absolutely nervous. But the combination of the surface being just right for an indoor hardcore for my game style on top of me being in relatively good shape, and I actually do play better indoors and outdoors, at least I, I think I do, It I, I felt good, given it's my first time representing Wisconsin in this type of team format. And th there were times where I thought I was going to lose it, where I was down like, you know, love 15, I missed the first serve, I was even down love 30, facing a few break points. But it was it was a challenge to say the least, because every one of my teammates was put on one bank of courts, and then me and me alone was put on the farthest court possible in the other bank of courts. Uh, we were put on court six, and then there are <laughs> there's twelve courts, two banks of six, and I was put on basically the island of the other bank. So people had to basically take out their telescopes to be able to even see the score, you know, six, six and a half courts down. And I was kind of nervous because based on actually the yelling on the other bank of the courts, I was the last one on. And I didn't know what the score was because I didn't have my cell phone. People were too far away from them to tell me that, hey, it's 2-2, two, 1-3 two, or, you know, 3-1. I just didn't know, so I just kind of kept my head down. And after winning the first set, the second set was getting really, really close. But luckily for me, my opponent, Daniel, he actually kind of had a stomach ache. He ate an, a sandwich too fast, and I actually, at the end of the match, um, I believe I did hit a backhand winner cross court approach shot to win the match. He had a hard time basically shaking my hand because he didn't want to puke in my hand. And yeah, I, uh, to an extent, yeah, I, I got lucky that he didn't play his best due to his his stomach condition because um, he didn't take the time on Thursday along with most of his teammates to come down a day early like me, Ian, and Scott did. But after I ascended the stairs and I saw the look on my teammates' eyes, I kind of knew that we didn't do as well as we wanted to. Even though I was the last match on, us as a team lost two to three. So it was a heartbreak, but I'm glad I did my best. I, I'm glad I did my part at the one single slot. But it, it still is kind of a heartbreak, but it, it's a part of life, especially in team tennis, that you know, even though you did your best, it's not considered enough for a W. But... The beautiful thing is, this is a round-robin tournament, so we're still not out yet. It's not an ideal start, but we could still win this thing. Me playing at two singles, uh, because Joey and I are basically neck and neck when it comes to UTR, and I think me and him are like one and two and or two and one head-to-head, -head, I, I totally forgot. It's, 
we're comfortable enough switching between one and two singles during a high stress, high important situation such as this. So I was first off the court. Um, I won against a pretty tricky player, but I was able to overpower him, 6-1, 6-2. And then Ian and Ira played, in my opinion, the best doubles I've seen them play ever. They were playing super lights out. Ira was just taking the biggest and thickest forehand return cuts at the ball, and he was just painting lines anywhere right on the middle of the line to maybe two or three inches inside of the doubles alley or even the baseline. And it was extremely entertaining to watch. I was just drinking beers because it was the last match of the day and I was watching it. And then with Ira being with Ian at three doubles, Kyle, the co-captain of mine that was icing his elbow and his teammate Jim, who is a uh, very highly sought after professional tennis instructor in the Milwaukee area, won at two doubles, uh, six, three, six, four. They played very solid. Unfortunately, our one doubles, Eric and Andy, lost in a 10 point tie break. And then Joey, who's playing at the one single slot, played an amazing big hitting tennis match. It definitely didn't seem like four or five tennis on some of these points. But Joey lost to a very young and very talented player named Aaron, 7-6, 7-6. So against the Ohio match, our second match on Friday, we did pull it out 3-2. Uh, to two. A close one, but a win's a win. There was this funny saying, and it's not that much of an exaggeration, among tennis circles both inside of Wisconsin and outside of Wisconsin. You can definitely tell that the Wisconsin team or someone from Wisconsin is playing tennis at your local tennis court because if you take a look at the closest trash can, you're going to see a lot of craft brews and a lot of IPAs in that garbage can. So naturally, after our last match on Friday, on the very first tournament day, we all showered, went to an Irish pub, and had a really good time. Yeah. Right. How about two and no?